Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me and probably see me now. Uh, this is the routing area open meeting. We're missing John. Um, I don't know where he went, but um, I hope he should be here soon. So I'm going to give him a minute or two before we start. Can someone actually reply on the chat or somewhere to, in case you can hear me? Yep, there we go. Thanks, Jeff. And you can see the slides, right? Okay, so uh, we got John. Um, I don't know, John and Martin, if you want to turn your camera on so people can see us and we can wave. Um, as I said, this is the voting area open meeting. Uh, there's John and uh, there's Martin soon. There we go. Um, let me see how this works. Okay, so as in all the sessions, here's the node well. Uh, the node well is not only about IPR, it's about other things like conduct and uh, the anti-harassment procedures are in there. So please take a look, especially at the links at the bottom, all the BCPs down there. Uh, there's here's a couple of other links that you can go take a look at, the routing area wiki, the routing area directorate. Uh, we don't need blue sheets because we have um, uh, the meet echo. Please, if you can, uh, go to the code EMD and collaborate on the notes. Um, you can just uh, click on the link at the, at the top of the of the meet echo and, and get there. I pasted the agenda in there, so it's maybe a little bit easy to take notes uh, from that. We're always looking for feedback about uh, how we're doing, what could we do better, what um, Things we may be actually doing well. Uh, please let us know either you know directly to uh, any of us. If you want to give us personal feedback, if you want to talk about somewhere else, uh, we can also try and do uh, things like that. Um, the other normal plea that we have is to please review documents, review documents in your working group, documents in other working groups. Um, this uh, request comes because. The work is not done at the end of the process. The work should be done during the process in the working groups. So let's make sure that all the documents have uh, you know, good quality by the time we get to publication. Here's the agenda for today. Uh, it's uh, relatively simple. We only have one hour. Uh, we're going to go through a very quick area status. Then we're going to have the Rotten Director report. And then we're going to have, just like we started last time, having um, some working group updates. Um, we have asked for about you know, five or six minutes each to talk about the working group, what they're doing, what may be interesting to other people. And then in the end, if we have some time, we're going to have some uh, open discussion. Does anyone have anything you want to add now to the agenda? Nope. Okay, good. So not much has changed in terms of working groups in the area. We don't have any new working groups. We didn't recharter or anything. And of course, we didn't close any working groups either. We do have a couple of new chairs. Uh, Don Fedick joined uh, as co-chair of Manet with uh, Ronald, who was acting as the, as the sole chair for uh, at least over a year now. Uh, welcome, Don. And also welcome to Yingsen Ku, who is the new RTGWG chair. She is replacing uh, Chris Bowers, who stepped down not long ago. Thank you, Chris, for all the work that, that you did in RTGWG. We also have uh, one BOF this time that uh, will happen tomorrow at noon local time in uh, wherever the meeting local time is. Uh, this is the APN BOF, Application Aware Networking. Um, 
please plan to attend. There shouldn't be any other uh, runner conflicts at that time. Just in case uh, you don't know who the responsibility for your working group is, this is the way we have uh, distributed the working groups. So uh, you can go talk to the AD for any working group you want. OK, so um, unless there's any questions now, we're going to go into the Rodden Director Report. I'm guessing that, uh, Haomian, you're probably going to present this. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, or, uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, hello? We can hear you. No problem. Oh, okay. Uh, this is Hamia speaking, and uh, this is uh, okay. My first time to do the kind of uh, uh, report for the routing directorate. Uh, next, please. Well, yeah, this is a kind of update for the review and the statistics of the whole team. And uh, currently, the routing directorate uh, is composed by uh, 44 routing area experts, and uh, all of them are quite active in different kind of uh, working groups and appointed by the ADs. And uh, the purpose of this team is to review the uh, drafts in the, from the routing area as they pass the, through the IETF last call, or we are also having uh, the review of the other uh, routing related uh, drafts for ITF from, from other uh, areas. And we also provide those kind of early review for any uh, routing area working group document before the working group uh, last call. So the, uh, it, 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 uh, this is always requested by the working group chairs uh, uh, before the uh, uh, working group last call uh, on demand. Next, please. Okay, and here are some kind of statistics uh, for the uh, review. Actually, uh, we uh, show the uh, statistics of the uh, of each IETF meeting uh, from twenty twenty. And uh, I think this time uh, we are having around uh, totally 17 uh, documents reviewed and uh, maybe uh, eight of them are for early review and nine of them are for, uh, for, for uh, working group last call review. And uh, uh, this is the, the, the data uh, from last IETF since March. And we also give a uh, uh, distribution uh, according to the uh, working groups uh, as a, and, uh, at the, the right hand side of this picture. And actually, we have quite good uh, distribution. And we cover a lot of uh, working groups in the routing area. Next, please. Yeah, and this would be a kind of uh, result for the uh, review because uh, uh, we consider most of them uh, uh, review completed with uh, ready with issues, and this would be uh, the around uh, thirty nine percent and uh, uh, almost uh, uh, thirty percent of them are ready with nits and. Uh, 28% for uh, uh, totally ready without any issues. And there's 3%, uh, maybe one document marked as not ready and needs some extra work. And we feedback this to the working group. And regarding the non-routing uh, area drafts, the status is given as the right-hand side and uh, I think uh, more than 50% uh, marked as ready with issues. Well, the 
twenty percent are marked as ready. Uh, another uh, uh, twenty percent is labeled as ready with knit, and there is also one document marked as not ready. Okay, this is a basically uh, uh, introduction for the uh, review of the routing direct rate, and I assume this is the last slide we have. Okay, thank you, Alvaro, that, 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 that's it. Great, thank you. Um, I should have said before at the beginning that uh, Haomian is joining or just joined the group of uh, Run Directorate coordinators, uh, along with uh, Luke Andre. He is replacing Amy, who stepped down uh, because of uh, changes in her job. So uh, welcome, and thank you, Amy, for all the work that have you done? Any any questions, comments? Uh, I'm not watching the chat actually, by the way. So, um, if anything comes up there, please come to the microphone. Um, any questions or comments around the Rodin Directorate? Okay, so. Um, we're going to move on to the working group updates. And uh, first up, we have NVO3. I think Matthew is here. Go ahead, Matthew. Hi, Alvaro. Can you hear me? Great. Yep, we can. Good. So, a little summary because we haven't uh, presented for a while. So, what, what's NVO3 about? Um, so, NVO3 is chartered to develop a set of protocols or protocol extensions for network virtualization in a data center environment um, with an IP underlay. Um, and, and it's to provide basically layer two and layer three services um, for these virtual networks to enable multi-tenancy and, and workload mobility. And, and the, the um, working group has a pretty broad brief in this, covering the architecture and the data plane and control plane security and OEM for all of these sorts of solutions. Um, it has seven RFCs so far. Um, we in the early early life of the working group we had a lot of debate on the control plane and um, should it be centralized should it be distributed what should we focus on um, the control plane and, and so basically the distributed control plane part basically bgp um, was hived off into mostly covered by bess working group now um, so in terms of control plane work we really we assess the applicability of the distributed control planes but um, they're mostly centralized Next slide, please. Uh, so data plane has been a very um, major part of the work of the, the group. Um, it's uh, basically uh, choosing and, and designing an encapsulation for network virtualization. Um, and the group over the last few years has spent uh, a significant amount of time selecting a data plane encapsulation from numerous candidates. So there were candidates who were bought brought into the working group itself, so Geneve, uh, VXLAN, I should see, say GPE, not BGP, a Freudian slip there, um, and Goo. Um, there were also um, some kind of pre-standard encapsulations for VXLAN and NVGRE that were, were deployed in data centers for these kinds of applications as well. Um, these, this debate was, as I think many working groups have found, um, is, is particularly controversial and difficult uh, because it impacts hardware. Um, and it's once something is deployed, um, an encapsulation is deployed, it's difficult to upgrade or interoperate with existing different deployments. Um, the way we, we worked through this was to form, actually, I think it, there were two encapsulation design teams over the process of this, and they ended up selecting Geneve encapsulation, um, and that was last year um, published as a standards track RFC 8296. Um, and the process we took was to say, well, there's going to be one standard. Um, the working group needs to be able to pick what it is, but the, um, the, the, other, the others can then, once the working group has focused on this one, can go ahead as an, maybe an informational 
RFT, um, and also ones that had broader applicability like you were sent off to the internet area. We've also documented the work of this design team in draft IETF NVO3 encapsulation, which is just going through working group last call in NVO3. We wanted to publish this as an RFC, um, really to, to, to kind of help with um, documenting our experience of, of trying to pick uh, a standards track encapsulation, because this is, you know, numerous times is a very challenging thing for, for working groups to do. Next slide. Thank you. On the control plane side, um, so distributed control planes are explicitly out of scope of NVO3. Um, the, the use of BGP uh, with EVPN um, is being covered by the BES working group, and there's a, there's a draft in BES for uh, using how you use Geneve with EVPN. Um, and we have an applicability draft in NVO3 um, to really, really scope out how you use uh, um, EVPN in in the network virtualization environment. Um, the working group has also done some kind of joint control plane work with the IEEE um, for split NVE, so the split network virtualization edge control plane requirements. So, so that's published in RFC eighty three ninety four. And that supported the development of IEEE 802.1 QCY in 2019. Um, we have found that there generally hasn't been a whole lot of contribution or demand for pursuing centralized control plane work in MVO3, although we have some Yang configuration models, which I appreciate is, is more a uh, management um, uh, model um, in the MVO3 Yang config draft. And next slide. So there is also some ongoing work on OEM, um, particularly the use of uh, BFD over Geneve um, and a, a more general draft talking about OEM aspects of the Geneve encapsulation. And we hope to wrap this up during 2021. So hopefully this year. Okay, and uh, that is it for NVO3. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thanks, Avara. Hi. So I'm Tom Mizrahi, I'm the secretary of SFC, and uh, Jim and Joel apologized. They couldn't make it today because they have a conflict. Um, next slide, please. So just a very brief introduction of what SFC is. Um, service function chaining, basically a service function chain is an ordered set of service functions so these can be, for example, firewalls or load balancers. And like we can see in the figure, a chain of service functions, but it's not necessarily a very nice linear chain. It can actually be a bunch of uh, virtual machines or physical machines, uh, which are in different places. And then when we have a service function path uh, and a packet that is forwarded through this path, it goes through a pretty interesting path, which uh, goes back and forth between these different machines. And that's what makes it interesting in terms of routing. Next slide, please. So this is work that was already completed in the working group. So basically we have uh, seven published RFCs. Three of them are related to architecture and use cases. Uh, two of them are related to NSH, the network service header. And this was the encapsulation that uh, was uh, standardized in the working group uh, for service function chains. So this was published uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, there was also an RFC which defined uh, the OIM framework in the context of uh, service function chains. And there is an RFC about context headers. Basically, a context header is uh, 
the type of metadata that is attached to the net network service header. And this uh, metadata can be used by uh, service functions along the, along the, the path. Next slide, please. Okay, so the current work, uh, we have uh, five active uh, working group documents and 12 individual uh, internet drafts. And basically one document is currently in ISG review, and this is a document that is related to uh, integrity protection. And uh, so right now there's a lot of discussion about this document uh, between the authors and uh, the ADs, uh, which have uh, reviewed the draft. There are uh, quite a few comments that uh, need to be resolved at this point. So that's ongoing, that's one thing. We have two documents which have passed working group last call. One of them is uh, related to the uh, IOM proof of transit. And the other one is related to uh, NSH uh, TLVs. So these are uh, on their way to the ISG. And we have a couple of more uh, uh, active uh, working group documents. And there's a bunch of uh, documents that haven't been ad adopted by the working group yet. So here's the tricky part. Uh, we haven't been meeting regularly in the last two years. And um, there's quite a bit of traffic in the uh, mailing list uh, by the authors of these drafts. But uh, we found that there is not enough traffic of people who actually review the drafts and discuss the draft over the mailing list. So one thing that we're looking for, uh, if people are interested in SFC, if they care about SFC, um, it would really help the working group if people read documents and uh, sent us uh, any comments over the mailing list and if we see that there is some new energy in the mailing list um, and more discussion of these documents, um, we'll probably go back to uh, meeting regularly and uh, we may be able to get some um, more, work, more work done. So that's something that we're looking forward to. Any questions or comments? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tal. Um, okay, so now we are on to Beth. Thanks, Alvaro. It's Matthew uh, Bocci again, um, co-chair of, of uh, Beth. Uh, Stefan, my, my co-chair, unfortunately, couldn't, couldn't make the meeting. Um, so next slide, please. So. BES stands for BGP Enabled Services, so it's the it's the home for key BGP-based services such as L3 VPNs, um, BGP VPLS, um, eVPN, multicast VPNs, and so on. Um, and it's kind of grew out of the old L3 VPN and L2 VPN working groups for the BGP-based services from those. Um, because we work with BGP as as our um, control plane. Um, we have a very strong relationship with the IDR working group, um, and uh, we regularly uh, co-review drafts. And obviously, we we, rec we uh, ask for extensions to BGP, um, which have to be um, reviewed by IDR. Next slide. Um, so this, I've just. This is a very active working group. Um, we keep. Uh, Martin, who is our shepherding AD, very, very busy. Um, so I, I've just picked out a few of the, the key um, sort of hot topics uh, that have been going on in the working group over the last, last year or two. So, so one of them is a, a BIS for RFC 7432. Now, RFC 7432 defines control plane procedures for BGP-based BGP Ethernet VPN. So this has started quite a long, long time ago. Um, and the update has been, there's been quite a few deployments now for this. So um, 
we're updating the RFC based on deployment experience with some clarifications and enhancements um, to the base RFC. So, I mean, the basic things like terminology, but there's things to do with root prioritization, there's native order roles, BDF, NDF, and so on. So there's been quite a lot of work on that over the last year. Next slide. Um, there is a pretty um, active draft on BGP-based uh, controller for multicast. And this is about how to use a centralized BGP controller to set up multicast trees. The work started a couple of years ago um, with a BGP multicast draft, controller draft, draft IETF best BGP multicast controller that was um, adopted um, then. There has also been um, some other work done um, which I think originally started in I, uh, this draft, draft HP uh, IDR, SR, P2MP policy started in IDR, which contains some, uh, some procedures as well for building um, segment-rooted point-to-multi-point trees for sort of point-to-multi-point segment-rooting policies. Uh, but that was mostly discussed in IDR, and we're trying to work out with the authors now um, how to take these, these drafts forward um, and come to a single solution. Next slide, please. Um, a lot of the work in BESS is really optimizations to eVPN, Ethernet VPNs. Um, a lot of the work now, uh, obviously, with, this, with increasing deployment, so people are looking at multi-homing, they're looking at load balancing, improvements to convergence as well for eVPN. So we're very active in, in improving eVPN, eVPN based on the deployment experience and new requirements. Um, so in the multi-homing uh, and load balancing areas, there's a couple of notable drafts here. There's EVPN, MHPA, which is port-based multi-homing, a bit like multi-chassis lag, um, but for EVPN. Um, there's the EVPN uh, in equal cost, uh, so it's using a link bandwidth to provide load balancing on access links running at different speeds. Uh, in the area of convergence, we have a couple of drafts at least. Um, uh, the, the fast DF recovery draft, which is NTP to get faster DF switch over, and there's uh, an IP aliasing draft um, to aid in this area. We also look at interworking between different uh, BGP based services. Um, so there's a draft, um, draft BRISET, BES, eVPN, VPWS, Seamless, which is really a merged effort to get into working between eVPN, VPWS, and legacy BGP, VPWS services um, and there's a lot of additional ongoing work um, going on for in, in eVPN and IPVPNs and uh, or merging eVPN uh, working with multicast VPNs and uh, thank you any any questions thanks Alvaro thank you Matthew um, we're now on to PCE. Go ahead, Drew. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, on behalf of Julian uh, and Hari, let me give you a good update about the PCE working group. Next slide. Uh, quick uh, uh, motivation on why uh, we started working on PCE. The idea was that we would need a central place to do uh, things like uh, path engineering, uh, global optimization, trying to figure out how to compute a diverse path across our network, make sure there is synchronization between uh, the view that is there on the devices and the controller. Uh, that all require centralized control, and that's where the PCE comes in. The initial set of uh, reason for PCE were more focused on multi-domain and multi-layer uh, coordination where no single device would have a global view so you need something like a PCE to cooperate with each other and help compute path uh, which are uh, like you know best path across domains and across layers and uh, once you do multi-domain again you need to do path optimization at boundaries that's where path key and things like that came in so this was a very quick motivation for why PCE was being worked on uh, in ITF. Next slide, please. 
Let me give a uh, quick update of what PC Working Group does. We are uh, responsible for the protocol, path computation element communication protocol, the protocol that is used between the client called PCC and the server, which is the PCE. PCEP is also used between the PCs in multi-domain and multi-layer uh, cases. So this is well suited for uh, like the coordination between controllers. PC became the core component of any SDN system. Uh, PC, unique thing was PCEP was that it has been used to signal uh, RSVPT, segment routing, PCCC, and now new work coming in uh, from beer. We hope work would come in from DeckNet, SFC. Wherever there is a requirement for controller to play a role, uh, PCE and PCEP protocol has a role to play. Uh, unique thing about PCEP, again, is that it's not just for packet networks. It's been used for optical, uh, uh, GMPLS, WSON, FlexGrill, uh, all networks which requires path computation and path setup to happen. Uh, PCE and PCEP has a role to play. Next slide. Let me cover some of the hot topics these days that have been discussed in the PC working group in the last few years. A stateful PCE, which was our enhancement to the basic PCEP that we have, which was stateless. Uh, stateful made us more closer to uh, a central controller. All that work has been standardized uh, quite a while ago, but the new work is there are enhancements that are happening over the stateful protocol, uh, inter-domain uh, stateful PCE, uh, things like state synchronization when there are multiple PCEs, new association types uh, between the LSPs at Stateful PC. So Stateful PC is continue to be enhanced with new use cases. Uh, use of PC in SDN system, uh, we worked on a PCCC architecture in Tease, and then the PCCC first extension uh, just got published as RFC 9050, and we have further enhancement to PCCC in the working group for segment routing, SRV6, P2MP, native IP, uh, etc. Uh, use of PC in, in a uh, SR system uh, is no-brainer. Uh, PC remains as the part which is going to help you compute your SIT stack and SRV6 path, etc. So uh, basic SR has already been standardized. The new work is SR policy, handling of uh, binding segment, path segment, uh, bidirectional, etc. The latest work, which is uh, keeping like a big chunk of our agenda this time was multicast. There was work related to SRP2MP policy being worked in Spring and PIM, and the extension for that in PCEP. A uh, lot of work from BEER. Uh, BEER TE makes a lot of sense where PC would be involved, but there are other new proposals as well where PC-based uh, BEER system and multicast system in general. Uh, on the list, there was some discussion on even PCEP uh, LS, that use of PC to transport the, uh, the network information to the controller. So these have been some of the topics that are uh, recently being discussed in the working group. Last slide, next please. So we have to, of course, based on our work, you could see that there is a lot of coordination between working group that is required. Uh, these is still the owner of the PC architecture. So things like PCCC and use of PC in ACTN and even in future, uh, any network slices related work, uh, that would happen in TEAS and any PCEP extension will of course happen in PC working group, but we need to make sure the, the requirements and architecture comes from TEAS. Uh, with CCAMP, uh, mostly all our optical work, WSON, FlexGrid, uh, good coordination is needed with CCAMP. Spring for SR, MPLS SR, as well as SRV6. A uh, lot of beer related things that I was just talking about. With IDR, uh, we had uh, one uh, uh, one proposal called Native IP, which uses uh, PCEP for BGP session establishment. So there is uh, some coordination with IDR is needed uh, on this, which has been uh, done. There is a cross uh, re review from Sue recently on this, which is very helpful. And since IDR and PCEP are both being used for SR extension, it's important that we maintain some parity between the two protocols uh, with respect to features. So that's always a thing to look out for with IDR. Uh, with PIM, SRP to MP policy, we hope that when DeathNet has uh, starts works on controller plane, PC would play some role there. 
similarly for SFC, any control pane work uh, any, uh, would require some coordination with uh, SFC working group in PC. And with this, I close. Are there any questions? Oh, yes, AC, I'm sorry. I kind of missed uh, IGP. So there is work with respect to PC discovery in IGP that is currently happening. And there is a, a document with respect to uh, uh, security uh, capability extension. So I'm sorry for missing that. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you, Drew. And the last update we have today is uh, for LISP. Go ahead, Luigi. OK, so I'm Luigi. I'm co-chairing this working group with Joel, which is not here. He has a conflict, as was stated for us, SFC. And we have Patna, our secretary. Maybe he's here in, I don't know. Um, anyway, slide, please, next. So. Let me just um, introduce, LISP stands for Locator ID Separation Protocol. This working group has been around for uh, something around 10 years. Uh, and, uh, and the early years was about uh, experimental deployments. So later on, we have been rechartered in order to um, uh, uh, go for standard tracks so that we have uh, documents that are uh, proposed standard. And the, in the last couple of years, we work at a lot on what we call the BIS documents that basically uh, define uh, the control plane and the data plane. So the basic specification of LISP um, uh, as proposed standard. And um, uh, don't be scared about the figure there is the, the status of our data tracker is just that we are happy because uh, we we finally got over some blocking points okay so and we have the main specs out and a few additional items also uh, we have a couple of documents that need to be shuffled um, that uh, the most important besides the main specs what we were working on in the last year or so is to secure the control plane. Uh, I have to say we kind of underestimate the work to secure the control plane, but at the same time we had a, a sequence of unfortunate <laughs> events uh, in, the, in the review, let's say. Um, the control plane, which uh, basically um, has a, 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 a pool model, basically like DNS in the sense you query, you you obtain the mapping. So basically well, the, the, the association between identifiers and uh, routing locator. Uh, so we, we added a new feature, which is the publish subscribe. So I can subscribe to specific EIDs uh, so that I can be updated whenever something uh, changes. We were chartered as well on the to support multiple protocols. Now, on the control plane side, we have that. We have what we call the LCAF, LISP uh, canonical address format, which we can associate different address format. Uh, so, so classical IP, but also uh, geo coordination or anything in a certain way. And we have registries that can be extended. On the data plane part, we, we, we still are more on the IP over IP model. Okay, but we we also work it on a, a extend, extensible uh, encapsulation format that allows to to go further in the future. Okay, next. Next slide, <laughs> Alvaro. Thank you. So uh, looking forward, um, looking at the charter, we have a couple of things that needs to be done. Okay, so and somehow related. Uh, uh, one is the NAT traversal, and then is LISP mobility. So uh, we promised to have a NAT traversal uh, feature because the, uh, in some use cases, this is what happens that the uh, um, end host is behind the NAT. So we need something that allows us to. Uh, traverse a nut. And um, 
the other thing is uh, lead spam mobility. So this is one feature that has been discussed, I, I think, from day one from, of Lisp. Because if you have a dynamic association between identifiers and locator, obviously, is some form of mobility with which you can play with. And um, so turns out in the implementations that uh, have been shown so far is when you have mobility, a lot of time you are be behind the nut. <laughs> so the, the, that is why the two working items are somehow related. I didn't put any draft name of these slides because anyway, you have everything on the Tata Tracker. And it's much more easier to remember this mobility than draft blah. And thinking about overlap with possible other working groups, uh, what comes to mind is the DMM, Distributed Mobility Management. We, we are not yet in contact with them, but I, I think would, it is a sensible thing to do is to go there and present what is the least mobility solution, because the, at least there will be mobility experts in a certain way that can give us feedback okay, on the uh, specific solution that we, we are developing. And uh, looking forward, more long term in a certain way, um, we we are in a turning point in the sense that we we except NAT and mobility we we almost completed the the charter, okay. But there are interesting applications and use cases that come up, okay. Uh, one is, for example, the use of Lisp for a multicast, and this is the, some work that is being developed actually in the PIM working group. And just they keeps us nicely updated. And the role of the Lisp working group would be only if any change in the protocol specs are needed, then we will say something. But other than that, we just try to keep uh, to 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 be informed on what is going on because we have to say that uh, uh, we also have a Lisp also support natively multicast. Okay. Then uh, another couple of interesting things we, that are starting is what we call the Uberlay. So I think it's the uh, ICAO, which is in, in International Civil Aviation Organization, is looking to revise their um, uh, aviation telecommunication network. Okay, So one possibility is to use LISP. OK, and there are trials already. But um, th this environment is pretty peculiar in the sense that um, you have radio regions OK, that very often are uh, uh, controlled by, by governments, but for obvious reasons and also historical reasons. Then you have different uh, communication service provider, which uh, 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 provide IP uh, um, transport to these radio regions, but then the interconnection of these providers is strictly regulated. It's not a, a, a multi-stakeholder model like the internet, I would say, in the sense that there are strict regulations to be followed, okay, because governments are uh, in, in, into the picture there. So it turns out that you have different providers that may use different, let's say, Lisp Cloud. And then you have something that has to connect all of them. And everybody has to have full control of the local policies, but also a way to transfer some policy information when uh, aircrafts move around. So that is why we call that the, the Uberlay, in a certain way, is that an overlay that connects several other overlays. So um, uh, we will soon work on the exact requirements that we received and try to, to be sure that are clear enough that something can, can be um, provided as a solution. Okay. The other thing is Nexagon. Um, 
This is some, also some something that is related to coin RG, so coin is in, in network computing, so it's uh, like edge computing in a certain way. So the idea is <coughs> to have a, a different angle to attack the V2V communication, so vehicle to vehicle. Instead of looking around and having direct contact with the different vehicles, you have a level in, of indirection that uses LISP. And basically what you have is that um, you, you split the roads in tiles which have an hexagon uh, uh, shape. The reason is there is a, what is called a H3 standard in order to um, be able to, to, to build this tile and then you can group a, a few uh, hexagons to form a bigger hexagon and so on. You have a hierarchy and what happens is that actually cars, vehicles can provide updates on what is the status of these tiles, okay? And what if you or your vehicle is interested in what is going on uh, on the tiles because you, you your plan is to pass over these tiles, what you do, you do subscribe to the specific EIDs identifying the tiles and so that you can get updates on the status. So basically um, getting updates about uh, uh, traffic jam or problems on the road, anything. So, and this is quite nice work that uh, is taking uh, off in the working group. Next, I think that I'm done with, yes, and you, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you, Luigi. Most welcome. So um, I hope everyone saved all the questions and comments for the open discussion, which is where we are right now. Um, so anything you want to bring up that uh, pertains to the area or that you want to ask any of us up here or anyone else? Flames, complaints. Oh, there we go. Shouldn't have said flames. Um, go ahead, Law. But the question about IPR again. Uh, I heard from one working group early in the week that if you have, or I should say, if we have a working group document and they add a new co author or contributor, it is now required that that person make an IPR statement that I guess is equivalent to what we require for a document at uh, working group adoption. Uh, I hadn't heard this before and are there any instructions or is it something that will be routing area wide or what is it? Uh, so, John, did you? Go ahead. Yeah, my, my answer to that is uh, we haven't decided because uh, I think the first I heard that question was in the last session from you. Um, it it kind of makes sense to me to um, try to harmonize that uh, area wide if we can. Um, and I'm <clears throat> open to, to discussion at the mic now, but we might want to also uh, have that as one of our topics for the next um, routing area chairs chats. It seems like a sensible policy to me, but uh, you know we we haven't yet taken any steps to. And I, I guess the one other point is um, you know uh, working groups have a lot of different you know poor working group policies, so I don't see it as being a problem intrinsically for you know one working group to say you know we're asking for. IPR affirmations in this way and another working group not to say that that's that's okay too. Um, and Lou, did you want to address Loa's question? Um, because if so, maybe we can take you next. Yeah, I was just going to talk about our experience in T's. 
Uh, hopefully my audio is coming through. I know it was bad in one of the earlier meetings. You're, you're um, fine. Okay, great, thanks. So um, we talked about that in T's. I don't know if it was one or two meetings ago. It came about because we were had a late I, an IPR surprise uh, during a last call. Um, so in T's, we've been following the practice of IPR at adoption and IPR at last call. Uh, but somewhere along the line for a particular document, an, an author was added. Um, and like a year or a year and a half later, we got the surprise about the IPR disclosure. And it just would have been nice when they were added that we knew about it. Um, and that's what caused us to change the policy that we're now doing it on only working group documents where we've added an author. So that's after the adoption IPR, we're now doing an IPR uh, poll or request to the new authors. Uh, I think this makes sense. I just uh, the experience I have that uh, I've been active in a number of working groups and we've been doing IPRs differently, I think, in each working group and that works fine. So as much as possible, we should let the working group handle this. But according to the guidelines that uh, Lou and John talked about here, I'm saying I don't think we need a strict policy that actually is required across the entire area. No, but I think it makes sense to offer the template at least. Sure. Right, but there, there, there was, um, you know, no, no intention on the part of the ADs so far to, uh, to require a strict policy. Um, and Alvaro or Martin can jump in if they disagree, but I doubt they will. Should we go on to Luigi's question or comment? Um, you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. It, it's just uh, an observation in a certain way uh, concerning the, the the status update. No, it's not status update. So the presentation about the different working groups. I mean, the the email you sent out to to ask for this presentation was about po also point out possible overlaps with different working groups, which I assume is not just related to to, to routing area, but also in other areas. But uh, unless. The, the the working group is really peculiar in the sense let, let, let's take pc as a, 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 as an example he, he has to to deal with different working groups which is wonderful the job they are doing i have the impression that in a certain way the working groups working in, in silos not isolated but but we do our solution we do our thing and that's it so at least as well i'm not blaming anybody it's just Wondering what we can do to improve the situation. And it's not about just the, this small presentation. What, what, what can anything we can do in order to have a, a, a to improve the exchange in a certain the information exchange between the different working groups? Because certainly there there, there is some kind of overlap um, or help that we can have from different working groups. That's my comment. It's a great comment, um, and uh, I, hopefully, it's not just a comment for the ADs because I, I'd be, you know, no, no, no. It's just a general comment. I say, My, yeah, exactly. That, so, so yeah. you know, cr cross working group communication is is pretty difficult, and um, or you know, it's it's difficult to figure out how to promote it. So, if if there's ideas from you know other people on the floor, please, you know, come to the mic. Um, uh, otherwise, I, I think, you know, we, we just have a few minutes left in this session. So, um, but this seems like another excellent topic for the, uh, for the chair's chat. Yes, I was suggesting that. Thank you. So I feel like we, we have now like two topics for chair's chats in the future, which is two more than we had when we started. So, uh, you know, this meeting has already been a success as far as I'm concerned. Don't see anyone else in the queue right now. Uh, anything else anybody wants to bring up? Uh, 
Otherwise, I think we can uh, we can close, right? Yep, we can. Thank you, everyone. Thanks all. See you again soon. Thank you, Mike.